Hi YouTube, this is Mark from Design Stein Technologies. Now, I'd like to show everybody, this is a resonant cavity cell that I've created. I call it my slinky cell. And it really, really produces a rotational magnetic field. Now, this toroid right here that I wound also creates a rotational field. And uh, nobody really believes me until I show them my meter here. This isn't doing this unless you look through the camera. Now this is happening from the field from that toroid. If I put it down here, it kind of straightens it out. But that is not blinking, if you saw this in real life here, at all. Well, I'm going to attempt to get this to the resonant frequency and get this down as low in amperage as I possibly could. So I'm going to start adjusting the PWM. I have a triple PWM that I built here in this box, but if you see on the front, you'll see my adjustments right there. This is the, the right one is the only one that I'm using currently, and that is what you're getting for voltage is the top, amperage is the bottom. And as I reduce this, you'll see the amperage will start to drop until I get to that sweet spot. I adjusted the duty cycle and got resonance already, so all I have to do is just adjust my frequency and get it right. I'm pretty sure I've gotten it there. No, I had it. That should be it right there. So now it's at zero. See how the meter is? That's only because of the field. Now if I back up, watch what happens. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And that's the rotational field from that toroid and from my cell. So if I put this down here, now that's a magnet core. I put a neodymium magnet in there. And if I go close now, you can still see what it's doing. It's pretty cool how the further away you go. Now it's flashing, and it's not really flashing. So anyway, we'll show you the production of the cell. It's still doing just what it did before at 17 amps. Well, that is how you create the resonant field, or resonant uh, production. But in the bottom of this... There's a spiral cell that I've created. I call it my slinky cell. You'll see, if you look at my other videos, you'll see what the core of the cell looks like. That's what's inside of there. And um, I've created this a few years ago. There is distilled water in here. There's no electrolyte whatsoever. Um, I did the same thing the other day, and um, I, I actually videoed opening the distilled water and putting it into a little bucket and sticking it in there. So what I'm going to be doing here is attempting to uh, pull the, the cell out of here. Now I have to, I'm conditioning it now, so I'm going to condition it in resonant uh, frequency and just allow this to keep running for until the, the top is uh, completely rusty. Take the cell out, wash it out, and uh, unroll it because it's a, um, it's a, a specific style of stainless steel. I, I can't say what it is because I'm going to patent it. So um, once this is completed, they will be on the market for approximately $159 a cell. But um, because it's so easy to uh, obtain a resonant frequency, you can do it with a, P a PWM. You don't have to complete doing anything with it like uh, Bob Boyce or Stan Meyer did. There's no additional uh, required items. But the problem is with this uh, right now and any other cell that's on the market that you can obtain resonant frequency with is those frequencies change as they warm up and the variables change. But um, You can easily put this PWM in your dashboard and put the meter on your dashboard to find that frequency again uh, unless you have a uh, frequency finder a resonant finder circuit like Stan Meyer produced. Um, I had to just adjust it and get it back to zero but... <laughs> there goes our, our blinking uh, ammeter. But you can see, if you follow these this wiring, there's no other wiring. I have a plug going into my, I have a PowerMax uh, 80 amp RMS power supply. It's plugged into there. 
um, this wire right here it's a piece of speaker wire it goes back into the uh, the motor negative terminal right there the motor positive terminal comes oh I'm not sure if you could see it and it goes to this clip lead clip lead goes down down here comes back around goes up to the left hand side of the cell and the other side of the cell is the white lead that goes down and connects to my toroid which is a uh, 1.6 millihenry uh, coil it's got um, silver coated uh, uh, copper solid copper wire with a PTFE jacket it's uh, I believe it's 18 gauge with a ne neodymium magnet uh, pushed into the center of the coil um, coming out of that goes into the let's see where it is yeah comes out of the coil goes back and connects to the motor negative terminal like I showed before but um, the ammeter and voltage meter is connected to this on the negative terminal uh, it's a shunt that comes with the uh, with the uh, ammeter and that comes back from the shunt and connects to the negative terminal on the PWM the other side of the shunt goes and connects to the negative terminal on the power supply positive side is split one side is going up to feed the PWM right there which is a line up to power all three PWMs um, it's just a junction and the other one is going and powering this little meter here so now the resonant frequency has changed I have to obtain it again there we go I've got it and production is still happening and it's pretty good you don't get massive amounts of uh, hydrogen out of here we're looking at about three quarters to one liter per minute and uh, that is in the microamp range it's not even uh, there, there's you can't even say there's 0.1 milliamp because it's not even picking it up on the meter or uh, 10 milliamps I'm sorry So anyway, please subscribe to my videos. We'll be posting a lot more. And uh, if you have any questions, please send some comments. I'd like to hear some comments. If you're going to be skeptical about this, you might as well not even comment because I'm going to have uh, all uh, comments will have to be approved. Sorry, but um, skeptics aren't allowed. Thank you.